We all know the tingly feeling comment that Chris Matthews made. Right. We all know that one. I didn't know this until I read your book, and I highly recommend this book. But he was on The Tonight Show a year ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're actually in the room when Obama gives one of his speeches and you don't cry, yeah. you're not an American. Right. Can you imagine? Let me ask your audience. Can you imagine if Sean Hannity said that <laughs> about Ronald Reagan? Uh, yeah. You're not an American if you don't cry. They would be calling you a fascist, a Nazi, and, and, and those would be the nice things. Uh -huh. Yet... Yet here is a guy, this isn't political analysis, this is a man crush. Chris, <laughs> Math Chris Matthews That's... had a man crush on Barack Obama. All right, let's roll some tape on Matthews. Go ahead. Talk straight here. All right. This is the network that has opened its heart to change, to change and its possibilities. Let's be honest about it. These, these people watch this network out here. Yeah, they sure do. This, this is the network. Huh? Yeah. Let me do this slowly for Chris's sake because he's so clueless he doesn't get it. It's one thing to comment, yeah. commentators will let a comment, sure. on your commentary show. Mm -hmm. He was anchoring a news event. The inauguration was a news event. First of all, how does MSNBC, only at MSNBC, they pick four they are the Obama ultra, network. Uh, ultra liberals to, yeah. to, you know, to anchor a news event. And he's saying that Obama's for change and we're the network of change. This is so insane that you, you learn this in Journalism 101. By the way, this is why Jay Leno, this is why Jay Leno said that right after the election, Obama held a uh, party at, mm -hmm. at his headquarters, MSNBC. Right. All right you, you, that's pretty funny. All right, now, you chronicled, I was all over the Bill Ayers and Reverend Wright stories. Good okay? for you. Well, and you write, and thank you, you said a lot of nice things in the book. But here is Keith Oberman criticizing George Stephanopoulos, who was the one guy in the mainstream media, That's for right. asking the question. He had been on my radio show the day before. I said, are you going to ask the question? Just a troll tape. ABC asking not a single question about Afghanistan or Pakistan, but abdicating journalistic decision-making of its own to take dictation, literally, from Sean Hannity on Tuesday, writing Stephanopoulos a question for Obama. I didn't write it. I su you suggested it. What, what's the difference who suggests the question? This was the first time a big, important, mainstream journalist, George Stephanopoulos, who, by the way, his wife told us that he cried, he cried. during the inauguration. Yeah. Inauguration was a wonderful thing, but an anchorman is crying at the inauguration? This is not good. Uh, the story should have been, what is the relationship between Barack Obama and Bill Ayers. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's flimsy, maybe it's not, but what is it? Instead, the story became you, because you, because <laughs> a, low me. a conservative yeah. had the nerve to give one of their guys a Bernie, question. the guy did bomb the Capitol. He did bomb New York City Police Headquarters. He did bomb the Pentagon. All right, let me, let me get this one last thing in here. This from the Washington Post, and we can put it up on the screen here. <laughs> this is a but this, this is very common. The sun uh, glinted off, uh, chiseled, Pectorals sculpted uh, during his, his four weightlifting sessions uh, each week in a body toned by a regular treadmill runs and, and basketball games. By the way, Bernie, he uh, shoots hoops. Yeah. That makes it, that's got to make him a great president. Well, I would agree with that because I should play basketball. Too, yeah. But that had to be, yeah. and, and if I'm wrong, I would like somebody at the Washington Post to, to tell me. I, I'll keep an open mind. That had to be the single most embarrassing sentence ever published. <laughs> it's not. In the Washington it's Post. It's common. That's what your book points out. This I, is common. I know, I know. But, but that's worthy. They were talking about Barack Obama's exercise regimen. That's worthy of a romance novel with Fabio on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to Dave. One more. David Gergen uh, about Obama during the uh, DNC. In, in so many ways, it was less a speech than a symphony. It, 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 that it moved qu quickly, it had high tempo at times, inspiring, and then it became more intimate, slower, all along sort of interweaving a main theme about America's promise, echoes of Lincoln, of King, even of Reagan and of Kennedy. Uh, it was a, it, is, it will not be in the annals of, I don't think it was as good as a civil rights speech qua speech, but as a political speech. It was a masterpiece. Great. It was a masterpiece. I would expect nothing less from David Rodham Gergen. <laughs> but, You're on your game tonight. Go ahead. But it wasn't a speech so much as it was a symphony. 
you, you have to be embarrassed when you talk that and, way. And they want the censorship doctrine for us. Yeah. They want to silence us. Yeah, because oh. because there isn't enough slobbering going on. Right. Bernie, I got to tell you, I, I, I laugh, but I really want to cry yeah. when I think about the fact that everything in this book is true. You talk about Palin derangement syndrome. We'll have you back in a week, and, and we'll great, talk about that. Great. Good luck Sean, with the book. It's a great book. Thank you, book. Thank you buddy. Thank you.